So today we're going to be working on shading basic forms and we're going to start with the cylinder. So I want you guys to follow along with me. You can pause any time that you need to and let's get going. So to start this, I want you guys to divide your paper in half by drawing a line because you're going to have to draw a cylinder on your own after we do ours together. Um, so go ahead and just write down the center of your paper, draw a line. It doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, mine is not. Now we're going to start with our basic cylinder and a light source on the right side. So when we look at a basic cylinder, as I have here, you can see that a cylinder is made up of two shapes based on the way that you look at it. So if we look at it from this side, it's a basic rectangular shape. From the top, it's a circle. Now, if we are actually looking at this from the side, it's not going to look like this, the rectangle and a circle on top. What we actually need to do is try and draw it as you see it here with a little bit of a tilt on it. So it would look like you were looking at it while it's standing up on its end. So to start that, we need to draw an ellipse. An ellipse is just a squished circle. So to start, I'm just gonna draw this elongated ovular egg football shape. That's going to be the top of our cylinder. Then you're going to draw two vertical lines going down from the edges of that ellipse. Now for the bottom, we're not just going to draw a straight line. That doesn't look right. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to draw a curved line that follows the curve of the bottom of the ellipse. So I'm going to match that curve on the bottom. And now I have my cylinder drawn. So now for every form that we do together, I am going to draw the light source from the right side. So I'm just going to draw a little light little sun so that I know that my light source is coming from over here. So now I can start shading. The main rule that you need to remember while shading these basic forms is that you have to shade in two directions. And what I mean by that is following the edges of your drawing. So right now I've got my vertical lines on the side and these curved lines. So I'm going to shade in those two directions. So I'm going to start by shading up and down to follow these vertical lines from the edge. Now my light source is on the right side, so the right side of my cylinder needs to be lighter than the left side. My left side is gonna be the dark side. So I'm just gonna go in, and you can see I'm holding my pencil at the back, so I have a light pressure. I'm trying to get this flat against my paper so I can cover a lot more area in a short amount of time. And I'm just going in lightly it's better to go light at first, and then you can darken it as you need to. Now, as I move closer to my light source, I'm gonna get even lighter. So I'm barely touching the paper with my pencil right now, so I can get that lightness that I need. Now, I've gotta smooth this out and make it go from light to dark, just like you did with your value and gradient scales in your value notes. So I'm just going in, trying to get everything as smooth as possible while also darkening it. Now I want to show you guys something. You can see right here I have this line forming where I go from light to dark. We don't want that to happen. We want it to be a nice smooth transition from light to dark. So I need to go in and smooth this out by adding just a light amount of pressure and shading 
to my cylinder so it goes from a nice dark to light scale. Now, I've shaded one direction. It's not looking quite as 3D as I would like it to, and that's why I have to go in and shade from the other direction. It's gonna help enhance the fact that your cylinder is rounded on top. So, just gonna go in and start shading in the same direction as my curved lines. And I'm actually doing curved strokes. I'm not just going straight across because these lines are not straight, they are curved. So I'm just very lightly doing this. And I know that I'm creating this edge where it goes from dark to light. And I will fix that momentarily once I'm done doing this. And you can also see I've gone outside the edges of my cylinder, um, which is totally okay. You can erase it later. It may be easier if you go outside the edge of it, but just a little bit for this. Now, I'm gonna go in and try and smooth out this shading. And I may have to go back in with my vertical shading to really get rid of that. And get a nice smooth transition from dark to light. And you can see with especially my lighter shading with my vertical, I'm trying to go all the way up and down the side of the cylinder. So now I have my two directions. And now I'm gonna go in and erase all this extra stuff. I don't want it there anymore. We're not done yet. So our cylinder has a hole in the top. So we actually need to shade this like it has a hole in the top. If we were using an actual cylinder and we had an actual light source and we were looking at this and our light source is coming from here, this is a hole. So this side, which is the front and side of my cylinder is actually blocking the light from hitting the inside of our cylinder. So when we actually shade this, I'm gonna shorten my ellipse a little bit. It's a little bit too much. Um, so then the light source is actually gonna go over this edge here and hit the inside, this part of our cylinder. So this side's actually gonna be lighter. So we're gonna do the opposite of what you think you're gonna do and we're gonna go from dark to light. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna follow this curve here because we're gonna be shading this side of our cylinder. So I'm gonna follow this curve back here for the shading for this part. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. And again, it's gonna be darker on this side and fade to lighter. And now I can go back in, still need my vertical shading as well. Slowly gets light. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. I drew too hard so I can't actually erase it. All right, so now the last thing we are missing is our cast shadow. You guys did a whole drawing that focused on cast shadow. So now we need to do ours. Our light source is on the right side. Your shadow needs to be on the left because your object is blocking the light from hitting the ground over here. Right now we have a floating cylinder. We want one that's sitting on something. So we're gonna draw our cast shadow. Now I'm gonna go from the lowest point of my cylinder and draw my line. And then I'm gonna go from a little bit above 
and draw my line. You can see I didn't go straight out. I kind of curved it just a little bit and that's okay. Okay. Now the darkest part of our shadow is going to be right at the edge of our cylinder. So I'm going to just make sure that this part is really dark. the darkest part so I'm putting a lot of pressure on my pencil to make sure that it is darker than the rest of my shadow and now I'm going to slowly let it fade out to a little bit lighter now I'm gonna smooth this out just a little bit because I've got some weird darker parts now I'm gonna make this even darker. So if you go in and you think you have it dark enough, but then as you start shading the rest of your shadow, it's okay to go back and darken the part that wasn't dark enough, like I'm doing right now. I also like to kind of bring that darkness out in the center of the shadow and then let it fade around that. And there is your cylinder. Now, you guys need to go in and do your own cylinder drawing, but your light source needs to be, com be coming from a different direction. So you cannot have your light source over here. So you need to draw a cylinder on your own. Choose a different light source. So it cannot come from the right side. So you can go from the left, from the corners, where from up above, however you want to challenge yourself. So go in, do your own cylinder, and good luck.